Okay, is it recording? Yes, right. So uh, Jason says, the purpose of a language is to communicate. Okay, communicate is communicate. Okay, any, any, any more? Why do we use a language? No, no? Okay, so we use uh, Jason's idea. So there's one, one thing if we have a language is so that we can say something and then other people can understand, right? So in, in, in writing, the, the main idea is if we write something, the person who reads it will get what we want to say. That's, that's the simplest, simplest idea of all, right? Okay, but why do, I, why do I want to say all of that? Okay. Um, the difference, the reason we use a language is so that when we are in different situations, when you are at home, when you are at school, when you are in a meeting, when you are talking to a bus driver, uh, uh, talking to a cashier, it's different situations, okay? The, the language changes according to different situation, right? Okay, okay. And then if I come back to what your teachers always teach you normally, from primary to now, every time teachers say writing, 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 and then you will, they will introduce you with this one. Okay, formal, informal. Okay. Um, like I said just now, formal, uh, no, no, no. Like I said just now, in our life, we have different situations, okay? And then in our life, we can separate these situations into two things, okay? Some are formal, some are informal, right? Okay. Setting here, you know what is setting? Do you know what is setting, anybody? What is a setting? Ah, okay. Hannah come up with a very uh very key word here, format. Okay, right. When when your teacher they teach you, right? They will say, okay, this one format their beginning, that one format their like this, right? And then in your brain, you are only thinking about, okay, kalau yang itu, format dia begini. If this one, format like this, right? So today, I want you to just change your mind a little bit, okay? When you write, I don't want you to think straight to format first, okay? I, I want to ask you to think what is the setting? Okay. Just bear with me. Eh? If you don't understand, just, just listen first. Okay. In my experience, when I teach SPM, when, we, I, when I tell them, okay, so this one, the format is this. That one, the format is that. You just have to follow the format. Okay. So what happens is um, students still don't get, they don't get why they have to do that. And because they don't understand why, they cannot connect, they just hafal saja. Okay, so I want to try to make you understand so you don't have to just Die, die, remember. Okay. What do I mean by that? Right. Okay. When you look at the screen, I have formal setting. 
I have informal. So everybody knows formal and informal, right? Yes and no? Yes, no? Do you know what is a formal? What, what's formal? What's informal? Okay. So just now I said there are different situations in our life. When you talk to a bus driver, then it's maybe it's not so formal. When you talk to your boss, maybe it's formal. When you talk to, uh, when you go to, uh, uh, when you go to the police station, then maybe you have to do be a little bit formal. Okay, when you go to the market, then maybe it's not formal. Okay, so setting here is just the different situation. Let me just put it there. Okay, different types of uh, scenario. Lah. Okay, if you like that. Okay. Okay, different situations here. Now, again, I go back to what the teachers always say. Eh? Teachers always say, kalau ini format dia begini. Okay, but I want you to think the balik. Okay, because of the situation begini, Okay, because it's in a pasar or a, on a bus or in an office, barulah ada the language. Okay, because there's situation, then we create the language. It's not because itu bahasa says we must do this, then only we have the situation. Do you know what I mean? It's because you have the situation, you have the environment, you have the place, you have the people, you have the prime minister, then you have your father, you have your friend, you have all these people, and then we create different types of language. It's because we have the setting first, then only the language is being created okay it's not the language young say if you do if you are in here you must use this it's not because of the language then baru ada setting dia. okay it's because we have the setting and then we have different types of language because and then we realize oh if i talk to my dad I have to be respectful. If I talk to my friend, then I can be more relaxed. It depends on your relationship. Some people are very close to their father, so they can be much, much more relaxed. So it's different situations, different scenario. Okay? Uh, okay. If you can like understand 50%, can you give me a yes? If you can kind of get what I mean. Nobody. Yeah. Okay. Two, two things. We have the people and the place. And then we create the bahasa dia. Okay? Okay, we, we, we have that in mind first. Okay. And then in your mind, you will think, why talk about all this rubbish? Why, why do I have to understand that? Okay? The reason is that I want you to understand why do we write something? When we write something... When we write something, there is always a purpose. There is always a purpose. There's a reason for why we write. We do not write for the sake of writing. We don't just write because we have nothing else to do. Okay? Okay? Remember that? 
We write because there is a reason. Okay, now, just remember that we write because there is a reason. There is a reason we write something. Every word, every letter we put down on the paper, there is a reason we create that. Okay, just like you say something to your friend because you want them to understand something. There's a reason. Okay, just, just keep that in mind first. Okay, then I want to jump back to the SPM punya soalan lah. Okay. Today, I focus more on directed writing. Okay. In your question, okay, this is part one and then this is part, second part lah. Okay, today, I want to put more focus on this one. Now, now um, the reason is, oh, no, no, no. What, so it says here, uh, directed writing, okay? So, I want you to understand, it's just not, it's not just a random name that they give it to this part. Why is this part called directed writing? Okay, actually it's just writing, but it's being directed. Okay, they guide you. They guide you with what? They guide you with a lot of the, you know, whatever notes that they put in here. They want you to take it and then put it in your answers, right? So, um, most of you, that you know, you, you know how to take this into your answer. So, so I'm not going to focus too much on that. What I want to focus on is going back to the basic. What, what is the reason you want to write something? Okay. Many people will tell you it's the format. Lah. Okay. Basically, it's the format. But when I say format, you will always think about just, oh, cara dia begini. But you never think about the why. Why do you have to do it that way? Okay, so today we want to explore. We try, huh? we try. Why do we write things in, in why, why people say some are formal, some are informal? Okay, so when you see this kind of question, yang dimana they need you to put in certain format, okay, so I'm going to skip the format because formats are very technical. So formats are like the, the, the title, the name, or the address, those are technical things. Those are formats, okay? But once you are done with the format, you know you have to put a title, you know you have to put a, an address, okay? What do you do? You have to, you still have to write something, right? Okay? In your text, huh? Let me just borrow this person. Okay. okay, this one is your format. Simple, technical. Everybody can just follow. But what you can... What you cannot follow is here. Everybody has different idea. Okay? So then you will have your intro. Everybody will start with an intro, right? And then these are the, the content. Content, like I said, in your content, you have your notes to help you. So I'm not that, I'm not, I'm, today's purpose, it's not about the note. Today is about this part. This part, young, you have to come from your brain. So I'll spend more time on talking about 
the introduction. Introduction, huh? okay. When you write your introduction, okay, let's, let's just jump into here. You can see the question, right? Okay, this is your exam question. Okay, so what do I mean by setting? Setting, the first thing we want to do when we have a question is um, this. When you read your question, the first thing you want to tell yourself is, selain daripada dia punya format, okay, you know this is an article, so you definitely know the format is, you need to have a title, you need to have your name, but that is it. Okay, the, the next step is you, you want to think what is the situation here? What kind of setting is in this question, right? So, hey, sorry. If you look at the question that you have for the exam, the, the question comes from this here in conjunction with the National Kindness Week, right? You have that, the National Kindness Week. Um, this one, you know, uh, you have to write an article. And then what is the setting is, you have this program, okay? This program where the place is the school newsletter. School newsletter is like a, Something for the schools to give to everyone, nah, to all the students. Okay, so your place is in the school, the setting. Ah. Your place is in the school, and then program is National Kindness Week. National is one whole country do the same thing. Okay, and then you want to write an article so that they can. they can put into the school newsletter. Okay, then you are given a title. Okay, and then they ask you to write the article. So you understand from the question that your setting is basically in a school environment, but you are celebrating a national event. <clears throat> okay. A national event that means the whole country celebrates the same event the same program so that is your setting okay um, is Abby in <clears throat> Abby can you give me some response I think I'm not sure if you are in No? Okay. Okay. So, again, uh, the setting is your school. The setting is a program. Okay. You need to put all this into your brain for you to start the intro. Okay. Why do I say that? Um, that's the exam question. Okay, here. Right. So when, when your teacher teach you, when your teachers teach you, they always tell you this very quickly, right? So you have formal and then you have informal format. You have formal format, you have informal format, right? Okay, so what happens here is, um, can you just quickly give me some response? Okay, okay, which one goes to formal? Can you type in your formal list? The green ones are your choices. Which one 
of these go into formal? Which one of these go into informal? Based on your understanding um, from your previous teachers, what they tell you, what is what should be formal? What should be uh, not formal? Can we start with the formal first? Can you just type in what you think should go into the formal category? We have talk, we have a speech, we have letter, informal letter, we have, oh, this is the same thing. We have formal letter, we have article, Okay, I'm just gonna. Uh, we have report. Okay, I'm just gonna go with yours. Yeah, speech. Speech formal. Report formal. Uh, letter formal. Okay, this one is a no brainer. Formal. Any more? We have speech. Mommy, can you switch on off your video? Yeah, off your video. It's showing up. Stop video. Okay, thank you. Still there. Okay, speech report, speech report all here. <clears throat> so do you mean these are informal? Agree? If you agree, type agree. Interesting. <clears throat> oh yeah, before that, I want to make sure you understand all these, yeah? Speech is um, ucapan, right? Report is report lah. Letter as uh, uh, surat tidak rasmi. Okay, tidak rasmi. Article, uh, how do you explain that? In, articles are like something you write in your magazine, something you write in the newspaper. It's like a petikan yang bertajuk. Okay, talk. Talk is like, it's very close to speech. These two are like best friend, right? These two are like best friend. Talk is like, uh, I can say, uh, you share something. You share something. Speech is you give people, like you are the, the boss, you tell them something. They are very similar, uh, but speech is more like, I tell you this, this, this. Talk is more about sharing uh, something, you give some information, like ceramala, okay? Okay, uh, letter, informal letter is uh, yang tidak rasmi. So, sure, huh? everybody agrees. Agree? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna change every, anything that you say here because your response um, is actually quite interesting, right? Normally, normally, people will say, uh, oh, okay. Uh, before that, I want to just make sure that you, you, you do know that all six of these, they do come with format, right? Okay. You, 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 do you know that? If you know that, you type yes. Six types of essay, they all have their own format. Whether they are formal or they are informal. They all have formats, okay? Yeah, do you, 
Okay, if you know that, can you type yes? All right, okay, cool. Right, so today we are not talking about format because just now at the beginning, somebody said, you know, if we, it's formal, informal, then it's something to do with formats, right? So today we are not talking about formats. Today we are talking about whether the language should be formal or informal, okay? And then at this point, you see, uh, all you do is you separate them. You tell me, uh, miss, if, if a speech, then confirm formal, Vanya. Then you tell me, if article, confirm informal, Vanya. Okay? But today, I'm here to change your mind. I want you to change your mind. Okay? Right. This is what a lot of teachers do. Huh? They tell you, okay, if this one, they are formal. If this one, they are informal. So from my experience, my students, they, they pretend that they understand. Okay, they pretend that they understand. But every time after the exam, something, something is wrong. There is always some issue. I always realize that um, they cannot, actually they cannot understand from their from the question when the question changed a little bit then they 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 fail to understand already okay the reason is like this lah because in your brain you always think that if this type of soalan dia mesti formal punya kalau yang itu mesti informal so i want you to change that into this okay so here you are looking at uh, a line, a line here. Okay, there's a line here. So on the left hand side, we have formal. On the right hand side, we have informal. Right? So I don't want you to think of it like two boxes. Kalau bukan hitam, putih lah tu. Okay, I don't want you to think like this. I want you to think of it as a line where there is very, 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 very formal, a bit formal, not so formal, neutral in the middle, neutral, neutral, and then slowly as we move, then a bit informal, tambah lagi more informal, more, more, more informal, more, 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 until the most informal, right? I want you to think of it as a line instead of a um, two boxes. Okay. Why do I say that? Okay. You see, uh, when it's in a box, it's for sure. But when it's in a line, it could be different. What I'm trying to tell you is maybe some talk here, sometimes they can be formal. Sometimes it can be informal. So how do we know? How do we know? Again, we come back to the setting. Setting comes from where? Comes from your questions. Your question will tell you what is the setting? What is the scenario? And then only you decide, okay, the question falls into which, which part of the line. Okay, for example, yeah, I give you an example. Like I said just now, talk and speech, they are like, they are very close, they are similar. Okay, it depends on the setting. Speech, maybe you give to the whole school. Lah. Speech, maybe you give to, uh, maybe you are asked to represent Kudat, then you give a speech to everybody. But you can also give a speech in your class. You see this? Different setting. It can be in a small class with only two people, your audience, with your... Uh, with your club, 50 people, 
with your school, 100 people. So different setting gives you different types of formality. That means, but um, how formal is this, right? So I will understand it as, if I speak in a class, I am not that nervous lah, because not that many people. So I don't have to be that formal. Maybe it's formal. Maybe my teacher asked me to do a formal presentation because they, my teacher wants to record it in the class. You see the different setting. The setting is teacher wants to record. So this is a formal one. Okay. If the teacher say, ah, you are the class monitor, you simply give a 10 minute speech enough lah. Not so serious one. Then it will come here. Right? So, so the types of the writing is very fluid. Like water, it can change. It can change depending on your setting. Setting comes from where? Setting comes from your, uh, sorry. Okay, so Puja put a, put a comment there. Greet audience with an appropriate hearing format for the speech. Yeah. Okay, again, I want to, you, I want to remind you. What, what Puja said here is the format. The format of a speech confirm is the same. Format is always you greet them. Good morning, teacher. Good morning, everybody. Today, I want to talk about this. Good morning, Mr. Uh, Mr. Gore. Good morning, uh, to Puan. Good, whatever. That is the format. Okay, but I want what I'm saying here is the language, the language that you use in your essay. After you put down your format, the language, how formal is your language? Okay. Uh, are we, are we, do you, do you understand what I'm saying here? The difference. If you understand, you put, you put down, get it, get it. Yeah, it's not about format. Today, I want to talk about the language. How formal is your language? Okay, later on, I will give you example. Okay. Right, okay, so format is the same. Huh? Aiman, can you switch off your uh, switch off your video? Okay, right. Format is the same. It's the language of the setting change depending on the question. It moves from being formal, not so formal. Maybe sometimes it's here. Okay? Like this one and this one, if two different settings, you would know that in a school event, it's bigger crowd. Um, you have proper MC, you have backdrop. So this kind of event, they are more formal compared to this one. Right? So then you will know that this one definitely laggy formal than this one. Right? Okay. So then probably you will put it here. Again, friend, a letter to your friend huh? here, if you look at this. So before this from from your from your teachers, they will tell you. Okay, if it's a letter for a friend, then informal. If it's a letter for uncle, also informal, right? But then you want to consider your setting. Okay, if, if I don't know my uncle that well, I only talk to him once in a year during Hari Raya. So, of course, this one will not be that informal compared to you talking to your BFF, right? If you talk to your friend, then you can be more relaxed. But when you talk to your uncle, maybe you have to show a little bit of 
uh, like you cannot joke that much. You cannot tell jokes, right? So in this category, even if both of them are informal, they have the same format, same format, but you can understand from the setting of the question, if the question say, okay, write a letter to your uncle to give them advice on how to fix the computer, right? So in your setting, then maybe you cannot be that informal compared to talking to your friends about your holiday, something like that. So then you know there are different levels of the how chill you can be, basically. How relaxed you can be. Okay, again, report. Report. You see different types of report. You, will t you told me that reports are formal, but if different types of setting, for example, if it's a meeting, a, a report for a meeting, so it's very serious. You are the SU, uh, your teacher asks you to report about the meeting. So this one have to sign, have to put your name, capital letters, somewhere. So it's very formal. But it's different when your teacher asks you to report like a class trip. You just report to your class. Okay, last week we went to the zoo, we saw tiger, and then we saw some snakes. This is not as serious as this one. So then it will not be as formal as the other types of report, right? So same thing, la. letter, formal letter, you have the school, you want to complain to your school, your pengetua, is not as serious as you want to complain to the town council. Town council is pejabat daerah. Okay, so different tone, different mood. Okay, again, article. Article is a very tricky part. Okay, I will put it in a more formal area. Lah. Because just now you, you said it's, uh, it's not formal. To me, I would say you sometimes have to be formal because you are writing for the school magazine. It's not just talk, talk, chit, chat. You need to write for the school magazine. But you can also say it's not as formal because now you have school blog, you have students' corner, for example. Huh? You just you can write very uh, informally. You can write very uh, more relaxed language. So it can be in the middle sometimes. Depends on your setting. Okay? Like a school newsletter. Okay? If the magazine, you see, uh, if the magazine is only for, like they print it on paper and give it to students, then simple. But if the question says, the school magazine is for the, the whole school, you know, make into a book or something like that. If they provide that, then if, if you think about it, if you want to print something into book, then of course your language has to be more, uh, be more careful. Then it will come, be, it will go to the more formal side, right? So I want you to think of it as a line because every different, every question has different setting and every setting will decide what kind of language you use. Okay, so again, it's not the format. It's formats are all the same, but today we're talking about the language and how formal is your language, right? Okay, so far, okay. If you are okay, give me an okay. If you have question, you, you can ask me also. If you have question, you can ask us now.
any questions any any confusion anything that you don't understand okay, don't be shy this is the time because i cannot see your face i don't know if you understand or not okay okay so okay so again uh, we're thinking we are thinking about the language we are not thinking about the format okay why do i say that okay why do i say that is okay this is what i see in your responses when you answer for your exam when you answer for your exam okay now you know how to uh, put them how you now you know you need to read the question to understand whether it's formal language or not so formal language okay but then you will ask like T teacher what is what is formal language what is not formal language okay what what what's what is it like so i'm gonna give you some examples here Okay, introduction. Today the focus is introduction. In in your in your answers response, um, a lot of you give introductions that are very general. General. Okay. When I say general, then I can almost see uh, when I read your answers. I can see that you are nervous and you don't know what to write. Okay, when I read your answer, I can feel that you're nervous, your mind is blank, and you don't know what to write. And because of that, you just hunt Okay, which is good, which is good, and it serves the purpose. Because I told you I'm, I didn't want to teach the right thing. I want to see what you can write, right? So now we want to upgrade your intro. Because intro is from your brain. The content is from the question. Intro and conclusion, it has to come from you. And as your teacher, I cannot teach you. If like this, you write like that. If like that, you write like this. It will mess you up because every exam question is different. So that's why you need to know how to identify yourself. You need to know how to understand the question yourself so that when you are alone with the question, you are not that nervous. Okay? And let me give you an example like what's the difference between formal language and different uh, and informal language okay here okay if you look at the informal it's it's always what we more commonly use we use it in our daily life not so formal lah, because most of the time in our life we we don't we are in setting situations that are not that formal for example we are with our family we are with our friends even with teachers in the middle lah. okay sometimes formal sometimes not so formal you meet people outside of your house the things that you do you buy things you go to the shop you go to the library like these places are not that formal so that's why you struggle you struggle a lot more when you have to write formal stuff okay when it's informal Okay, look at the pink one. It's something that it's easier to write. Okay, Julie said she is worried about COVID-19. So these are words that we use very often. And it's not that formal. It's just 
biasa-biasa saja. Okay, the same meaning when we put it in a formal context here, the blue one, you will see that the choice of words, the words, they are more, uh, how do I say this? They are not the typical words that we use in our daily life. Okay? You see the difference? Julie said, Julie said, Julie said, and then in a more formal setting, we will choose something more serious. This is more serious. Express and said, Julie said, Julie, dia cakap. But here is like dia express, dia nyatakan. Okay? So the seriousness is different. It's more serious. It's more uh, like no joke punya. Okay? Serious. So, set, this is adjective. This is adjective. Dia sangat risau. Dia risau. Okay? But here, Julie menyatakan, menyatakan kerisauan dia. Okay? So, you use more nouns. Okay? Nouns, huh? kata nama. Okay? Untuk menunjukkan kerisauan. Untuk menunjukkan keseriusan. Okay, it's like that. It's like when you think of your Malay language, even in, in Chinese language. Okay, when you give a speech, when you write a formal article, article is for people to read. Okay, then you have the seriousness there. Okay, you want to say, okay, uh, uh, okay, for example, in informal, we will say, um, oh, you know, COVID-19, many people die already. Okay, informal, uh, many people died already because of COVID-19, informal. Then, when you want to change the tone, the mood, the mood, make it very formal, you want to write, something formal for the school, okay, like an article, then you say, oh, jumlah kematian uh, COVID-19 telah meningkat dari uh, masa ke semasa, right? You have that serious tone. So you see there, ramai orang mati, many people die, so it's like, it's, it's adjective, it's verb, kata kerja, kata adjective. But when you change it to formal, then you suddenly you use noun. Okay, jumlah kematian. Kematian. So in, in English, it's the death rate. The death rate. Okay, jumlah kematian. Telah meningkat. So the tone of the language. This is where it's different. It's not about the format. It's the language. How you put yourself to make people, when people read your sentence, they can feel that you are serious. You are not joking. You are really talking about something serious. Okay? So, num you see number one here, we try not to use the words that we speak. When we speak, we choose the easiest word. Okay? For example, like good. Oh, this is good. This thing is not good. That is good. Okay, it's it's what we say. It's not formal. It's very chin chai because it's not recorded. When you say something, people hear it and then it disappears. Nobody has evidence. But when it's a formal setting, everything needs to be properly arranged because they want to post it in a magazine. They want to put it in a newspaper. So, the language has to be a little bit more serious and not just the words that we used to say in our daily life, okay?
The second thing is then you will use you will use some very serious words. When it's serious words, then it's very often it's it's nouns. Okay, like like uh uh like for example like normal normally we will say you are fat, you are fat. But in a very formal article, when you want to share the knowledge, then you will say maybe obesity. Yeah. Then maybe you will say uh, the importance of a balanced diet, right? So importance, kata nama. In, healthy diet is very important, informal. Okay, Import, the importance of healthy diet, sh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so in a, in a formal language, we use a lot of nouns, okay? Okay, let me see the timing. Okay, that's okay. Okay, then this is something that I took from your 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 answers. Huh? Okay, if you see informal, informal is what you wrote. Huh? Okay, if we read this. In this world, if you want to be a respectful person and successful person, you must be a good person. Okay. The problem here, I'm not talking about the grammar. I'm talking about the, the sentence. Huh? Okay. The problem here is it's not clear enough. I mean, I can understand what you mean. But if, if you want to write something in a newspaper, then maybe it will confuse people. Okay. Because... It doesn't really show that you are confident. When I read the sentence, uh, I know this person hantam sejati, right? And of course, you cannot have these kind of words lah. Wanna, if you wanna be, if you wanna be great, you gotta, you gotta do something good, right? These are very spoken, very. It's what we say every day. It's what you watch in YouTube. Why you, want, why you see that in YouTube? Because they, they're just looking at the camera, they say something. It's not, it's not writing down. So the words that they use are very relaxed, right? So, so, so you, you got to understand when is the time that you can use this kind of language and when is the time that you, you should avoid using this, Okay. So what do I mean by being clear is you, you tell things one by one. So I follow your, your style. Lah. In this world, a great person, okay, see, I don't want to use good because I want to be more, like more serious. Lah, okay? A great person needs to have certain quality. Okay? Again, you see, I use kata nama di sini. Seorang yang uh, seorang yang berjaya or whatever lah kan? seorang yang berjaya uh, perlu quality-quality yang tertentu quality-quality okay I am not using respectful I am not using successful um, these are adjective but I will switch it back I will use kata nama so, orang yang berjaya memerlukan quality-quality uh, yang berbla. So I use the noun. I use nouns to make it very firm, firm, clear, confidence. Okay, very sure, very sure. You are very sure of the things that you want to write. Okay, and then you realize, you realize. My sentence is not as long as this person's sentence, right? This person use one comma, two comma, and then full stop. I, I choose one comma, full stop, and then I start a new sentence. Why? Because I want to make it very, very clear. Okay? So in a formal setting, when we speak, right? When we speak informally, we tend to drag. Oh, you know, I, you know, last time I did this, and then, right, and then, right, 
it's very long, it's very draggy. So, but when you are giving a speech, when you are telling something serious, you are writing an article, everything needs to be very clear. So, how to make it clear is keep things simple but serious. You keep things simple, but the tone is serious. Okay? You need to understand, serious doesn't mean you use difficult words. It's just the change of the tone. Okay? Your tone of the bahasa. Right. Next. Next, I'm gonna... I think I don't have enough, enough time. Okay. Hopefully can. Okay, the, the next thing is don't repeat the same word again, 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 and again. Okay, you see this one? Huh? This is because every country needs to become a good country with good people. How many good do you want? I don't know. I don't know. Right? So when I see this, I, I will feel like this person uh, don't know what to say. This person doesn't know what to say and so that's why they repeat the word. So you want to avoid that. Change, change it up. Okay? So country, I put here, every successful country needs great people. Okay? It means the same thing actually. But mine is shorter, but clearer, clearer and no, no repetition. I don't repeat words. As much as I can, I change, I change it up. I use great, I use successful, I use uh, what else? I don't know, what, whatever that you can think of. Okay? You change it up and, and make things clear. Right? Okay, I'm going to jump into this. Okay, so here are the five things, huh? the four, five. Oh, this is the same thing. Sorry. Just going to delete this. So I, I'm just, I just shared four with you. So how, how, uh, okay, I'm going to quickly jump into this. Okay. Again, I want you to come back to the question. Okay. So I have National Kindness Week. Okay. The country is doing the program Minggu what's baik hati ka? Minggu baik hati in, in in Malaysia okay and then you write for your school you write for your school so I would say it's a bit formal it should be formal okay but not like super super formal like a complaint letter lah, okay so how to write the intro Okay, how? I want to come to here. How to write an intro. I want to share with you some tips that I use with my students. Where once you know this, you won't have to start your intro um, like randomly. You don't have to start randomly. You know exactly how you can start an intro okay this one can be article it can be a speech it can be a letter you all you need to do is to change it according to the format right how number one you start with a quote you know a quote huh? a quote is something that famous people say right you know this guy Mahatma Gandhi okay but of course, you have to know. Lah. If you know, then you use. So this, this uncle said, once said, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. Okay, this is a very famous quote from him. Uh, you start with this, then straight away you give an impression of the seriousness that you are, you are starting. Okay, you started with a quote, then you tell people, look man, this is serious. This is something very serious. Okay? So you have these famous people like Mahatma Gandhi. You have 
uh, Tun Mahathir, whatever that famous people said, you can use it. Okay, so he said, you must be the change you want to see in the world. Okay, but when you use a quote, you need to draw connection. You need to connect them, right? So if you see the second sentence I use here, I, I use the word world because it comes from the quote. Okay, so I want to link it back to the quote I want to connect it. Okay, how to connect? I, I add my sentence here to explain the, the code. So for the world to become a better place, we ought to be. Ought to be is need to be. Lah. But ought is more serious. Okay, we ought to be a greater person. Okay, why do I use this one? Why do I use the black color sentence? Because I want to link it back to the question. You see the green one? The green one is from the question. Today we celebrate National Kindness Week. So we need to learn and then you continue with by saying, oh, uh, we have to, there are different types of things that we can improve. Here are blah, 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 blah. Right? So there are three steps. You start with a quote, you link it with your own sentence, then you link it down to the question from the exam. Okay, that's number one. Number two, number two, you use a ranking, you use a stat statistic, you use research, something like that, right? Then you will start with something like this in the in year 2017 Myanmar Myanmar was voted the kindest country in the world right okay, this one this one this one is um like a ranking number one in the world okay so again I set the tone it's serious this article is serious and I'm talking about you about something serious. We need to be kind, right? And the, sec the other way is according to the report, according to a research, according to a studies, Myanmar residents gave money to charity to help the less fortunate. Okay, this one is real. Huh? I googled this. So it's not like, it's not like what, what saja. So, again, you have to understand by reading more, right? Okay, look at the red one. This, why do I use this? Because I want to link it back to the research that I find, okay? The whole thing, the whole research is a good example for us to learn to be kind. Okay, kind I link it back to the question. Okay, you see, I start from a, I start from a, a, a statistic, a ranking, and then slowly I bring it back to my question. Again, there's a purpose, there's a reason why we do everything, because we want to bring people come to the topic. We want, we use all of this to bring people to come back to the topic that I want to say. Okay, so that's second second way. Eh? The third way is you use a question. Again, you throw down some serious note, some serious question so people can start thinking. Did you know that 95% of Malaysian would not stop their car to help an injured kitten on the road if they see one? Okay, this one, I make it up. I make it up. Why? Because the first two, just now the first two, you need to know, you need to read more to, in order for you to write. But what if you don't know anything? You don't know anything. So this, I make it up. I just created myself. You know, 95% of you guys, they, you don't stop your car if you see an injured kitten, right? So I, I just simply throw you a question. 
to make you think, to make you feel like, okay, this is something serious. And then I use again the word this. This, what is this? This whole thing. This is sad. This is a heartbreaking statistic. We need to have more love and then we need to have kindness. Again, you see, I use the question and then I bring people down to my topic, to my question. So in conjunction with, again, this one comes from the question in conjunction with the National Kindness Week. Let us use blah, 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 blah. Okay. I come back to the question. I just take whatever that the questions have. Right. Okay. So that's the third one. Use the question. Okay. The fourth one. You create a scenario. Just now we said you, we want setting. So now we use the setting. Lah. We use a setting. Okay. Okay. Here, the, the scenario is different. The question is, have you ever seen someone begging in the street and realized later on that nobody would help them? Okay. Again, it's a, I combine the question and then I create. I also make this up. I create a scenario so that people will start thinking, oh yeah, ka? oh yeah, oh. okay. Why? Why is I want you to think this whole thing is also very sad to imagine, but, but, but I bring you down to my country. It's happening to my country, to our country, and we need to have more kindness. This is a issue, issue yang ada di 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 Malaysia. So, macam mana selesaikan? So we have to have kindness. Kindness. Why I use kindness? Because that's my topic. It comes back to my my little kindness topic here. So in short, in short. The general idea is you always start your intro with a world problem or a country problem. Okay, just now, even the quote, quote, if you use quote, it comes from famous people. These famous people are like, everyone knows, the whole world knows them. So you start, one, you start from a problem, your issue, like just now, lah. nobody will save a cat. Nobody will help a beggar. Uh, the trend the trend is Myanmar is now number one in the world. Okay? And the trend is they, they donate money to the charity. It's on a world level. You start from world problem, world trend, world issue. You can use positive issue a positive news you can use negative problem either way okay and and from these problems you go to your personal thoughts you link them how is this issue connected to you how is this trend inspiring you motivate you Okay, so it's personal. For you, it's like how? What is your opinion? What is your thoughts? Okay, what is happening around you? Just in your neighborhood. Okay, so it comes down to personal. And then you bring people back to the question. Use something from the question. So those are the three main things that you have to set when it comes to a formal setting. Huh? Okay, formal setting, not specific to any format. It can be an article, it can be a speech, it can be uh, like even in an informal letter, pun mole. Okay, if your if your friend if your friend is uh is fat. Right, you want to advise them to, to lose weight, uh, then you can start with, you know, Malaysia is number one obesity in Southeast Asia. 
Uh, that that's for that's real. Huh? So these are the very like powerful word, not not words, powerful information that you can bring your friend into the topic which is to help them lose weight. Okay, it's very powerful. Rather than just tell them, you know fat is not good. You, you, you have a lot of, uh, you eat a lot of bad food, not good. Okay, so it's like, it's, there's not much content in there. Okay, so these are the steps that you can follow. All right, I'm gonna move on. Okay. Like I said just now, I want to focus on intro and then just how to do the conclusion. Conclusion is something not so difficult, okay? But I'm just saying you can use the same technique in your conclusion, okay? Just now, we said we can start with a quote, right? I'm saying now you can also end with a quote. But of course, if you start with a quote, don't end with, with a quote. It's the same thing. Lah, okay? It's just that you can mix and match. Mix and match. For example, you start with um, the Myanmar story. Okay? You want people to be kind, blah, 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 blah. When you finish, then you just drop it with a quote. Uh, with a quote. And then you just advise people. We need to start from ourselves before we can reach to people. Again, this is very powerful stuff, powerful, uh, more formal language in a more formal setting. Okay, you can end it with a quote, you can end it with solutions. Okay, when you start with a problem here, we start with a problem. This is a problem, then you finish it with chara, solution. Uh, tell people how to solve this problem that you, you give in the beginning. When, okay, teacher, can we use benevolent to change? Yeah, 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 sure. Anything that you think you can think of. Okay, but those are the different topics. Those are different vocabularies. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, so here you start with a, a question. You start with a question, so you want to end it with a solution. Okay, we need to be kind in order to save the world, whatever. Okay, end it with a solution. Or the last one is a call to action. Call to action is like a manyahut lah. You ask people to do to do something together. Okay, here I highlight. Uh, you start with Malaysia, orang Malaysia got got uh, no. There's no uh, kindness among Malaysians. That is your issue at the beginning. So in the end, you want to tell them. Let us all share the info with each other so that we can be kind to our friends, be kind to our neighbors, be kind to our friends and family. Let us do this together. It's an action. You ask people to do it together. Okay? Uh, that, that's it, right? So, so today, um, the only focus that I did was how to write an intro and then how to write uh, uh, and the conclusion. Okay, I don't want to um, do the middle part because most of you are okay already. Okay? But some of you, uh, still I need to probably discuss with you after if we come when we go back to school. Not if we will go back to school, but when we go back to school, then if you still cannot score the middle part, then I will talk to you one by one. But today, it's the intro and the conclusion. Okay, what I want to do, huh? <clears throat> what I want you to do is, I have two questions here. 
Okay. Number one is article. Let me get a pen. Right, it's an article, so you have your format. You know the format is article, but I want you to read the question to get the setting. What sort of setting is this? And how can you use the language to fit into this setting? Okay. And the thing that you need to do is give me an intro that fits the setting and then give me a conclusion. I want the kepala and the ekor. I don't want the badan. Okay. I want you to give me an intro, give me a conclusion that fits the setting of the question. Okay. This is number one. And then I have a second one is here. I Okay, the second one is here. Just now, it's an article. This one is a speech. It's a speech. Like I said, the formats are different, but the setting, the language setting should be um, able to, you should be able to know how serious they are okay this speech you have to imagine that you are a teacher you are a teacher you have to give a speech during assembly okay so your setting is you are a teacher and you have to speak in front of every student it's a speech it's a speech where you share information how serious is that? Okay, I want you to give me an intro and then I want you to give me a conclusion. All right, so um, you, you get what I mean? Two types of questions, two intros, two conclusions. Okay, the reason I'm not asking you to write an essay is because I want to help you to to not have that many homework okay but at the same time i want you to make i want to make sure that you can understand when you write there is a reason and it's not just just throw in words every word that you choose there's a reason when you choose a serious word the reason is because the setting is serious. When you choose a relaxing word, relaxed word, because the setting is more relaxed. Okay. And of course, you need to put in the format. Lah. Okay. For a speech, you have to put in word uh, formats like a, a very good morning to the principal, to students. Today, I want to share this, 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 okay? You have to put in into this kind of uh, the examples that I showed you just now. But the steps, the steps are more or less the same. You always start from a general world problem, country, then you narrow down to your topic. Okay, I think I, I used a bit, five minutes already over the time limit. So, any question, any issue, anything that you don't understand, please let me know.